If you're a carburetor limited or you know your carburetor is undersized, this is the video for you. I'm going to show you how to make power for free and back it up with flow bench data. In this video, you're going to see some flow bench testing on this Holly 950. We're going to show you some simple modifications that have real gains. To start off, this Superflow 600 is rated for 600 CFM. As a workaround, we taped off the tapered spacer and tested the carburetor as a two barrel on both sides at rated vacuum. All four barrels were tested at lesser values. Testing was done with spacer and without spacer and in two barrel configuration at the rated 1.5 inches of mercury. After I got all the baseline numbers, I took the carburetor back to my place for modifications. When I went to take this apart, I noticed the base gasket was overhanging very slightly. It was a little crooked when assembled last. The throttle shafts are already machined down, but there is more that I plan to do to them. As you can see, I thin them out mostly on the screw towers and the leading edge for airflow. When I had the blades out, I also put an edge on them with a file. After reassembly, I carefully ground down the screw heads. Be sure to use some Loctite when you put them back in. Here is a decent shot on how far I took down the screw head. The other area I wanted to touch up were the boosters. The leading edge has some casting flash. I sharpened all four boosters up with sandpaper using the tip of a finger. The material comes off very easy. The other thing I tried to do is sharpen the bottom edge of the booster by hand. I didn't want to mess anything up so I did not use power tools. I'm trying to just get a little better booster signal for the fuel side of the carb. This will help with drivability and throttle response. If you look closely, the black half moon marks are where it is overhanging the throttle bore. The Trick Flow tapered spacer works really well, even in its unmodified form. We found that it did not line up to the bottom of the carburetor as perfectly as it should. I ended up RTVing it to the bottom of the carburetor and then contouring it with a sand roll to match the throttle bore. So this is my final product here. This spacer here is glued down. Uh, one thing I did notice while playing around with this carburetor is the secondaries go a little bit over center and we've seen that um, on the flow bench. We're going to put a uh, an adjustable link in here and I prefer to use the top hole to get a little bit more um, opening room in the primaries for drivability before the secondaries pop open. We also noticed that an 8 thou shim underneath the throttle stop gets more airflow. So I'm going to put an 8,000 shim right where my thumb is and I'm going to use this uh, screw. This is the baseline two barrel at rated prior to modification. Right away I realized that this probably isn't a 950. The test in modified form with just throttle valve and booster work with spacer left stock aside from drilling out the mounting holes picked up almost 5 CFM on the primary side and almost 7 CFM on the secondary side, a conservative total of 11 CFM delta. Also notice the flow bench isn't quite making the target depression value of 20.41. After RTVing, we couldn't block off both sides for rated flow in the two barrel form. We did the rest of the testing at 5.5 inches and comparing deltas. No spacer versus spacer and baseline form is worth a conservative 7 CFM on this bench. A poorly fit spacer versus RTV'd and clearance and over centers corrected is worth almost 10 CFM more. You're looking at 17 CFM with no spacer versus a fitted tapered spacer. If you have made it this far, what do you guys think? Both sides of the carburetor flowed mid 520s. Booster signal picked up. I didn't cheat with any of my starting leakages. 
Throttle plates are drilled and idle screws set from when I took it off the engine. Here is the actual data. For someone that is carburetor size limited, there seems to be some worthwhile easy gains. D1, D2, D3 indicate the days I was on the flow bench. The data is taken on separate days. We are likely looking at something that is flowing close to 1050 CFM or more after these modifications. Here are the delta calculations based off the data. There is going to be another part to this. Next I'm going to look into air cleaners, something that can easily be changed but costs money. If you're still interested, in about a week or so I will have some interesting results that will wreck anyone's ideal flow numbers.